A Plaguelands Media Production. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Hugh from Plaguelands Media bringing you uh, another book review today. Now, um, I have been kind of on this kick where I've been going back and reading older um, books, fantasy and sci-fi primarily. And uh, today I want to talk about The Midwitch Cuckoos by John Wyndham. Now, I am actually familiar with this author from high school where we were um, made to read Day of the Triffids, <laughs> which my cat clearly doesn't like, um, by the same author. And... So going into this book, I kind of knew his writing style and whatnot. This was published in 1957. And of course, I knew the story from um, the movies that had been released uh, in 1960. There was a movie called Village of the Damned based on this book. A sequel came out shortly after called Children of the Damned. Uh, but I was... Um, primarily familiar with the 1990s version of Village of the Damned with Christopher Reeve in one of his last kind of starring roles. And so having not read the book, but knowing the story and having watched the story as primarily a horror film, um, it was really interesting to read this for what it was, which is a rather chilling science fiction novel. So let's just get right into, because my cat uh, is clearly getting anxious, let's get right into another episode of... Now, for those of you not familiar with the story of the Midwich Cuckoos, which, in my opinion, is a much better title than uh, Village of the Damned. The town of Midwich in England is a very small, almost isolated village. There are a couple of villages around it. And at some point, um, something lands in the village and everyone is knocked unconscious. There is a circular radi radius of this, or diameter, I should say, of um, this kind of field. And if people kind of pass over that, they fall unconscious as well. So for like one entire day, uh, everyone in the village is unconscious. And even people that travel into the village via bus or whatever, they fall unconscious too. The military is called in. The book is primarily narrated by um, an a writer who lives in the village with his wife. They were out of town in London at the time. And when they come back to Midwich, um, the military have kind of closed it off and they want to know why. And then the, the writer kind of explores uh, what is going on. So when everyone just wakes up and the shape, the, the silver object that landed in Midwich is gone, um, a few months later, all the women in the village that are of the age discover that they are, in fact, pregnant. And they all give birth to children that bear similarities in their looks. They have golden eyes. And the military are kind of trying to make sure that no one else um, hears about this, while at the same time, they ask the author because the author um, was uh, in the military previously um, during the Second World War and his previous commander, he kind of meets him by happenstance and the commander says, look, can you keep an eye on the village and report any weird stuff that goes on? Um, so we get this, this idea that there's something not right about these children. That's pretty obvious from the start. And that's where the cleverness of the title comes in. If you're not familiar with the cuckoo bird, they actually lay their eggs in the nest of other birds. Um, and that, that is kind of how the 
cuckoos operate. So then you have this idea of what impregnated these women, which to the credit of the author is never actually revealed. So it's left up to the imagination of the reader, which I think is more powerful than anything that could be laid out. So these children grow up and there is a, an elderly gentleman in the town by the name of Zellaby. Uh, his daughter actually falls pregnant, uh, but loses the child ultimately. Zellaby has a theory which he kind of tests out and they discover that all the boys share uh, kind of like a hive mind. So if one of the boy children knows something, then they all know something very quickly. And uh, it's the same with the girls. And he works this out using um, a puzzle box. So the writer and his wife um, leave the village and then come back um, many, many years later. The children should only be like eight or nine years old, but they look like teenagers now. So their growth is very, very strange. And it's discovered that uh, they have powers. They can control people um, using the power of their mind. And this comes out when um, uh, one of the villagers is driving a car and he runs into basically not on not on purpose but some of the children are walking in the street and at the last minute he doesn't see them and he swerves his car and happens to clip one of the children who doesn't die but in retaliation the other children make him drive into a wall and he ends up dying and so it is this escalating kind of tension with these children who have the power to control people and the villagers who are now frightened of the children and the children's mothers who kind of want to protect them, even though they know that they're not um, like natural, so to speak. Which it's a really kind of slow burn, but it is well worth your time. The big payoff, however, and this is going to be a huge spoiler, but this book was written in 1957. And if you haven't read it now, just who fucking cares? There are other villages around the world where these children were born. In um, Alaska, there was like an Eskimo village, but when the, the parents or the, the mothers found out that these children were born unnaturally, they had them all killed, left them out in the snow. In Russia, um, which is kind of what this book is hinting at. The Russians were using these children to see if they could help them in, in the, like, uh, as a military thing, which is how the uh, British military got into um, looking after Midwich. And ultimately the Russians decide these kids are too dangerous. We, we're going to destroy them. And then the whole thing kind of, comes to a head very, very quickly. This is an absolutely fantastic book that I wish um, we had read in high school. Now, my biggest regret isn't actually that I didn't read this in high school. It was that after reading Day of the Triffids, which is a fantastic book, don't get me wrong, I didn't go and look up more by this author because John Wyndham is quite a prolific science fiction writer, maybe not as prolific as, uh, say, Alfred Bester or Isaac Asimov um, or, or any of those types. But he has written a number of books that sound very, very interesting, which I've actually uh, ordered to kind of read and track down and kind of um, give it a go. The Midwich Cuckoos, a absolutely fantastic novel, one that I highly recommend. Um, if you're looking for a slow burn science fiction uh, novel, this is right up there with the best of them. The movies don't do the book justice. And you can say that about a lot of uh, adaptations of novels. But the problem with in my opinion, at least the 1990s version is they tried to turn it into a horror movie 
leaving out a lot of the science fiction aspects which make The Midwich Cuckoos such a fascinating read. Um, it just doesn't work on a level that the novel does. That's The Midwich Cuckoos by John Wyndham. Please, if you like early sci-fi, check this out. If you enjoyed this, hit like, subscribe. Uh, check us out at playglandsmedia.com. We're on Facebook, this YouTube channel, of course. Uh, also go and check out the website for Luke Carmen, a uh, fantastic Australian author, friend of the channel, and one of our partners in crime at playglandsmedia.com. Even go and check out his uh, YouTube channel. He's recently posted a video which is well worth watching. Until next time, everyone, please stay safe and I will see you in the next video.